Let me ask you a question. How often do you use soap or any hygiene products? Nine, ten times a day? Hand soap, body wash, shampoo, deodorant, laundry detergent. All of these products make you feel clean, but how do they work? Today, we'll look at the most common active ingredient in soap, sodium stearate. Before we look at the molecule, let's look at soap's history. Soap has been used from 2200 BC, where Babylonians used alkali, water, and cassia oil to formulate it. Modern bar soap wasn't developed until around 1500 to 1800, with France being the hub of semi-industrialized manufacturing of soap. Now, I know what you're thinking. How many times can I say soap? But what is soap? Well, in chemistry terms, soap is a fatty acid salt. Let's break that term into two, fatty acid and salt. What is a fatty acid? A fatty acid is a carboxylic acid, as seen here, where you have a terminal carboxyl group, and the R group is a long hydrocarbon chain. A salt, in chemistry terms, is a molecule composed of a related number of cations, or positively charged ions, and anions, or negatively charged ions, so that the product is electrically neutral. Now you're probably familiar with table salt. Well, table salt consists of a sodium positively charged ion and a chloride negatively charged ion, which together form a neutral compound. Putting these two terms together, let's look at what makes sodium stearate a fatty acid salt. As you can see, it has a long hydrocarbon chain attached to a terminal carboxyl group, making it a fatty acid. However, this hydrogen here has been replaced with sodium to balance the negative charge of the oxygen with the positive charge of the sodium, creating a salt. Because of the charges on the salt portion of sodium stearate, it is said to be hydrophilic, or in other words, it likes to dissolve in solutions that also have charges, such as water. The hydrocarbon portion of sodium stearate is said to be hydrophobic because it has no charges and therefore will dissolve in solutions that also do not have charges, so this will not like water. The reason we have soaps and shampoos and molecules such as sodium stearate is because a simple rinse under water will not take away your fats and oils from your skin. This is because the fats and oils are hydrophobic. As we mentioned before, they do not like water and will not dissolve and wash away with simple water. Sodium stearate works to remove oils and fats through the hydrophobic effect. To illustrate this, imagine these baby elephants in the wild. They are analogous to hydrophobic fats and oils on our skin. When lions, or in this case polar water molecules, surround the baby elephants, parent elephants, or sodium stearate, steps in to surround and move the group of baby elephants. The elephants point their tusks, or charged heads, towards the lion and tails, or hydrophobic tails, towards the babies. This allows the group to pass safely. The micelle is the equivalent of the circle of elephants you just saw. The micelle is a sphere of hydrophobic tails pointing in towards the fats and oils and hydrophobic heads pointing out towards the water. This is how sodium stearate dissolves your fats and oils in water. The industrial synthesis of sodium stearate is pretty straightforward. You take some animal fat and you add it to a base. When heated, sodium stearate and some side products precipitate through a pretty simple mechanism. Imagine all the hands you shake and hugs you give every day. Now imagine that in a world without soap. Imagine going to the doctor's office in a world without soap. Imagine going to the dentist's office in a world without soap. Imagine going to a restaurant in a world without soap. Imagine all the students who study at Geisel and go to the bathroom and don't wash their hands in a world where this video doesn't exist. Luckily, that's not this world, and you can direct them our way. Thanks for watching.